uh, we understood about the default VPC. And also practically we have seen by creating a new project and uh, uh, we have seen how a default VPC is getting enabled. Right. So in this uh, video, let's create a new VM instance under the default VPC and let's see how uh, it's getting the IP addresses and all. OK, so basically uh, we are going to create a new resources. Uh, in this case, we are going to create a VM instance with the default VPC and check. All right. All right. So this is our uh, the Google Cloud platform. So let us, okay, let, let's start using the same as like learn GCP in English. This is the uh, project that we are going to, uh, you know, uh, use for our training session. So let's use the same. So ensure that you are in the right project. Then let me go to, maybe I'll just search here, right? Network, all right, VPC network. Just to show you that there is a default VPC here as well, because last time we have explored with a different uh, project, right? Uh, so the reason why we have created a new project is to show you uh, from the beginning, right? Uh, from the beginning uh, of creating a, or enabling or how the default VPC is created. Fine. So uh, now for this example or going forward, let's let's make use of this project for our training. OK, learn GCP in English. And if you see here, we already have a default VPC that's created um, automatically for this project. OK. Now, as I said earlier, let's create a new VM instance uh, and you'll be seeing that that VM instance will be part of this VPC. OK. So when you say it will be a part of this VPC, as you know, it will get an even the IP address from this VPC. Okay, let's see that. So what I'll do before proceeding, I'll just duplicate the window and I'll just go here to the compute engine. There are two ways you can go to compute engine, as you know already. Either you can search here compute engine or you can just click here the navigation menu and you'll be seeing the option compute engine. And here, uh, VM instance, okay. All right, so currently we don't have any VM instances running here in under this project. So let's create a new VM instance with the option here, create instance. We can give any name here, like my VM ENG. All right. So you can select any uh, region that you want to, uh, you know, have this VM to be deployed. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, my mistake. All right, so you can uh, select the required region as like you can choose which region you want to deploy that uh, VM. By default, it is selected your central one. All right, L let it be no problem. And uh, if I just scroll down just to reduce the cost, right, uh, just to reduce the cost, let me change the mission type to E2 micro. Mm and and one all right so i have selected n1 and then just to reduce the cost again i'll just go to shared core f1 micro all right so this is fine okay just scroll down scroll down so under this advanced option if you can just click here just you'd be seeing something like networking okay just click here we'll not see anything here but if you just scroll down here under network interface okay for network interface uh it's mentioned as like default okay so we are creating a vm instance and in the network interface of that vm instance which network is added that's what it is if we have multiple networks that's created when you click this down arrow okay you'll be seeing the list of that network when you click the uh, this down arrow right you'll be seeing the list of networks created if you remember we have uh, when we're discussing about the overview i told you that uh, by the maximum quota 
uh, by default is you can create up to five networks okay if you want to create more than five networks you need to request to gcp anyway even if you have more than one or two three networks uh, when you click here you'd be seeing all the created networks available or all the uh, created and available networks here you can choose any one among them but currently as per our situation or as per this situation we have only default network configured or default network is enabled we don't have any additional custom vpcs that's the reason it's showing only the default all right and as i said if you have uh you know if in case you have created one more uh, network or two or three networks you'll be seeing those informations here as well and you can select or choose the required one fine and if you see the ip address right it's mentioned as like 10.128.0.0 slash 20. so the reason why it's showing this specific ip is that we have choosed this region right us central region and uh, this zone if you go back here under this default vpc uh maybe i'll just go to the subnets and let me go to that uh region it's us central one right us central one yeah this is what it is so this is the uh, region which we have selected here and if you see here uh the subnet that's allocated in our default vpc for this particular region that us central one is 10 128 0.0 slash 20. so that's the reason if you see here um th the ip where it is If you see here, it's mentioned as like 10.128.0.0 slash 20. Okay. Uh, if in case you are changing uh, the region to some other, uh, some other region, like uh, maybe let me come to Asia or uh, Europe. Okay. When I, when I change the, uh, you know, region to Europe, so far I have not created it. Right. So I'll just come down see the ip address has changed earlier it was something like 110.128 right but now it's showing us like 10.154.00 okay so let me check europe london right uh, okay europe west 2 so if i come here put uh west 2 all right so this is this is what we have selected there and uh, the subnet that's assigned to this particular VIP, uh, the the virtual private cloud is 10.15400 slash 20. And that's the reason here, as soon as you choose this particular region, you are seeing this IP address or this subnet here. All right, that's it. So let's let's proceed further and we'll click this button create. So once you click the create button, uh, the VM instance would get created here and you would be seeing it get an IP address from that subnet as like 10.154.00 slash 20 right Fra it would get any IP from that subnet okay let's let's wait okay so it's telling me that this particular VM instance is currently unavailable in this zone alternatively you can uh, try request oh, okay no problem maybe what we can do we can just let's try to refresh and check once and if it's not coming then maybe let's uh let's let's create a new one okay let's create a new one with different zone all right anyway it's not happening because it seems that uh, the requested machine types uh, is not available in the region which we have uh, selected okay maybe let's let's dismiss this let's create a new one okay uh, no problem in it let's create a new instance just give the name uh, my vm in or my vm dash one i'll put um dash one dash in okay all right so now uh, let, let let it be in the central one lower only means anyway we have seen how this subnet was getting changed right and let me go down choose n1 and here as well shared core micro 
all right so uh, now it should get the ip address from uh, let me see you it's your central one right what's the subnet that's assigned to your central one central one is having this right so it should get an ip address some somewhere in this subnet 10.128.0.0/20 okay mm, even if you come down you can also validate it uh, by clicking this advanced option networking is come down here it will be yep if you see here it's already with the 10.128.0.0/20 all right let me just click create you, ca you can also uh, you know change to different uh, zones but just to minimize the cost i'm uh, have just gone back to the same region all right it will take few seconds to get it created let's wait all right it got created now and uh, it took almost a minute okay so this is the vm that we have created and as we have deployed it in the uh, this particular zone uh, this is what it's mentioned here and if you see here if you remember uh, before we create uh, click the create button we told that it would be coming in um, 10.128.0.0/20 subnet right so uh, as, as per the same it it, it took this ip 10.128.0.22 right it's part of uh, it's uh, that's slash 20 right so this is what the internal ip address and this is the external ip address maybe we'll be coming back to this later point of time uh, this is uh, and also if you see here network uh, it, it is a part of a default network so basically it is telling that this vm is deployed in this uh, zone all right which is in the us central one and it is having this particular internal ip address and i have already shown you uh, what's the subnet that's assigned to this internal ip or this particular region under the default network right fine and uh, it's getting this particular external ip and it's working within the default network so this is what it is uh, trying to convey by default you will not be uh, means when you create a new vm instance you may not be seeing this network option uh, so for that what you need to do uh, you should come here because by default what happens uh, you will not see this network instead you will be seeing like this only recommendations yeah so this is how it will looks like okay uh, by default so you, you may not need this recommendation or in, in use by uh, means just for this video to show you uh, this particular vm is a part of uh, this network right so what i did i just removed this and uh, let me add this network okay so it's 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 confirming that this vm dot which we have created now is part of the default network and that's the reason it's getting the ip address from the defined subnet all right 